terminologies and surfaces of tooth. Welcome to the next video where we continue to explore tooth anatomy. This video will focus on the various terms used to describe the elevations and depressions on the tooth surfaces. Let us learn each one by one. First, imagine a molar tooth within your mouth. Focus your attention on the crown of this tooth. Where are its highest points? They are at the cusps. Just as mountains have peaks that reach towards the sky, so does the crown of a tooth feature elevated points called cusps. These cusps are like the mountain's peaks on the tooth's surface, standing tall and distinct from the surrounding terrain. They are designed to come together and interact with the opposing teeth when we bite and chew. Just as the landscape of the Earth's mountains varies from one region to another, tooth cusps also vary in shape, size and arrangement. The arrangement and number of cusps on different teeth are far from uniform and tell a compelling story about the tooth's functionality and evolutionary adaptations. Now try to answer this question. Which of the following is referred to as eye teeth? A. Incisors B. Canines C. Premolars D. Molars Correct answer is option B. Canines Canines are often referred to as eye teeth, featuring a single prominent cusp on their crown. This cusp is pointed and designed to tear and grasp food. Think of it like the sharp peak of a mountain that can pierce through surfaces. Canine cusps aid in tearing meat and other tougher foods which aligns with their historical role in hunting and capturing prey. The number of cusps varies from one tooth to another. Canines show a single prominent cusp. As we move further back in the mouth to premolars and molars, the landscape changes. Premolars may have two to three cusps resembling a cluster of interconnected peaks. These cusps work together to efficiently break down food. Molars, the heavy-duty grinders at the back of our mouths, exhibit even more complexity with four to five cusps that collaborate in intricate ways to crush and grind food particles. Pop quiz In the intricate landscape of dental anatomy, we encounter not only the grand elevations like cusps, but also the smaller yet equally significant elevations known as the tubercles. Tubercles are smaller elevations formed on the crown surface due to an extra formation of enamel. Let us try to answer another question. Cusp of Carabelli is a feature of which tooth? A. Mandibular first molar B. Maxillary canine C. Maxillary first molar D. Maxillary second molar The correct answer is option C. Maxillary first molar The cusp of Carabelli is an interesting dental feature that can be found on the maxillary first molars, specifically on the mesiopalatal surface of the tooth. It is also known as Carabelli tubercle, tuberculum anomaly of George Carabelli. It was first described in 1842 by the Hungarian George Carabelli. Remember, the cusp of Carabelli is often referred to as a tubercle rather than a cusp due to its size and functional role. While cusps are usually larger, more prominent elevations on teeth, 
A tubercle is a smaller rounded projection. More details of it will be covered in our upcoming video on maxillary first molar. When we drive on the road, we frequently encounter the speed breakers. Let's look at the speed breaker. They are linear elevations on the road, comparable to the ridges, emerging as linear elevations that add texture and significance to the surface of a tooth. They are named based on the location. First, let's identify the ridges seen in anterior teeth. For that, let's take the example of the maxillary central incisor. On the incisal part of the tooth, we see a linear mold of enamel. It is called the incisal ridge. Now, if you view the lingual aspect of the tooth, you will be able to see marginal ridges. What are marginal ridges? These are the rounded borders of enamel that define the edges of a tooth surface and usually border a shallow depression called fossa, known as the mesial and distal marginal ridges. They are also present in the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth. Let's take an example of a maxillary first molar. Now if you trace the mesial and distal margins, you will be able to appreciate the mesial and distal marginal ridges. Other types of ridges specific to posterior teeth are triangular ridges, transverse ridges and oblique ridges. Let's identify them one by one. Triangular ridges extend from the tip of a cusp to the central portion. It gets its name due to the triangular cross-section that this ridge shows. Confused? Let us visualize a pyramid. Focus on the tip of the pyramid. This can be compared to the cusp of the tooth. The tip has four edges radiating towards the base. If you take one edge, it has two flat slopes. If you cut it, you will find a triangular cross-section. This is the triangular ridge. From each cusp, there is usually a triangular ridge going towards the fossa and two cusp ridges going on either side. The number of triangular ridges depends on the number of cusps it has. The maxillary first molar, for example, has four cusps. The mesiobuccal, distobuccal and distolingual cusps, each with a single triangular ridge and the mesiolingual cusp with two triangular ridges, the mesial and distal. Now trace the mesiobuccal triangular ridge and the mesial triangular ridge of the mesiolingual cusp. They meet to form a bridge. This forms another ridge known as the transverse ridge that crosses transversely the occlusal surface of posterior teeth. We also have another confluence of triangular ridges called the oblique ridge. The triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp meets the distal triangular ridge of mesiopalatal cusp to form this oblique ridge. Pay attention to the fact that this is a unique feature specific to the maxillary molars. Now, we discussed that the mesiolingual cusp has two triangular ridges one mesial and one distal. The mesial one meets the mesiobuccal cusp triangular ridge to form the transverse ridge. The distal ridge of the mesiolingual cusp meets the triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp diagonally. The resultant ridge crosses obliquely across the occlusal surface. This is a single identifying feature for the permanent maxillary molars as well as the deciduous maxillary second molar. Before moving to the last type of elevation, that is cingulum, let me introduce you to another term, lobe. A lobe is a primary section in the formation of a tooth's crown. Imagine children playing with clay. Let's say we have red, blue, and green tubes of clay. 
Let's take three clay tubes and press them together, shaping them into an incisor. What do we get? We have the middle portion of the tooth formed by a blue clay lobe and the left and right sides formed by the red and green clay lobes. Human tooth formation is also in a similar manner. The labial surface of an incisor is formed by three developmental pieces called the lobes. One more lobe is needed to form the lingual surface of the tooth. So in total, the incisor develops from four functional units or lobes. So lobes are the foundational units or building blocks upon which the tooth's final shape is constructed. Cusps stand as prime examples of lobes' transformative power. You can see these characteristics on the incisors. The incisor ledge is characterized by three rounded elevations called mamelons in newly erupted incisors, with each elevation representing one lobe. Although we often associate mamelons with permanent incisors, it's noteworthy that similar serrations can also be found on newly erupted primary incisors. Now what is a cingulum? Remember we said the lingual portion develops from another lobe that forms the cingulum. Cingulum forms a mould or elevation at the cervical third of the lingual side of anterior teeth. Here is a quick question for you. Pop quiz. Now let us delve into the types of depressions. There are four main depressions or concavities that we see on the tooth surface. They are the fossa, sulcus, groove and pit. Let's take the same example of the maxillary central incisor and the maxillary first molar. Fossae are irregular concavities on tooth surfaces that resemble gentle basins. They are also named based on their location. On the lingual surfaces of anterior teeth, there is the presence of the lingual fossa, bordered on each side by the mesial and distal marginal ridges, cervical by the cingulum, and incisally by the incisal ridge. Now let's look at the occlusal aspect of the maxillary first molar. Imagine it as a miniature terrain where valleys form the counterparts to the peaks we've previously discussed. An area covered by the elevations, that is the ridges, is akin to a fossa. So, fossae seen on the occlusal surface of posterior teeth formed by the convergence of the ridges at the centre are referred to as central fossae. Now look at areas adjacent to mesial and distal marginal ridges. These are also like small triangular spaces. So fossae present on the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth, mesial or distal to marginal ridges are referred to as the mesial and distal triangular fossae. What is the function of the fossa? The cusps and fossa of opposing teeth are like pestle and motor. They crush and grind the food. This interrelationship is called occlusion. Now visualize the meeting point of mountain ranges, their slopes intersecting to create a long valley. This is called the sulcus, which is formed when the cusps and the ridges meet at the center with an inclination. Just as valleys have streams that follow their contours, the sulcus has a developmental groove at the junction of its inclines. A groove is a shallow linear depression seen between the primary parts of the crown or root. Now imagine smaller trails and streams running alongside the main path in a valley. These are referred to as supplemental grooves that accompany the developmental grooves. These grooves, although less distinct, are like hidden trails that add texture 
and intricacy to tooth surfaces. Next, consider a hidden oasis nestled within the embrace of towering mountains, an oasis that holds life and stories in its confines. In dental anatomy, pits are like these oases. They are small pinpoint depressions formed at the junction of developmental grooves. They are formed at the center, known as the central pit, and also formed in the mesial and distal fossa, referred to as the mesial and distal pits. These grooves, pits and sulci are areas where food, especially sticky food, gets stuck. Because of their shape and location, it can be challenging to effectively clean these areas through regular brushing and flossing. This creates an environment conducive to bacterial growth and eventually leads to the initiation of tooth decay. Thus, care should be taken to brush these areas diligently. And that's a wrap. We hope you had fun learning with us.